Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, I spent about 50 hours runecrafting to get to level 91. I've been having a lot of fun at Guardians of the Rift, and just over the course of the last couple of videos, I've spent like probably close to 100 hours there. Or if you include the time I spent blood runecrafting, I've spent at least 100 hours just runecrafting over the last couple of videos, and now I feel like I'm free to finally go back to playing the game and doing doing stuff. But the thing I want to do this video is Giant's Foundry, which is a pretty new smithing minigame. And as you can see, smithing is pretty low compared to all my other stats. I think it's the second lowest skill, yeah, behind fletching. I'm excited to try out the new minigame though and get a bunch of total levels along with it. It is AFK time for me though, so we're gonna go to Motherload Mine, which I haven't been to for a while. I don't, did I ever get the coal bag and gem? I don't think I ever got the coal bag or gem bag. Um, I have 190 golden nuggets. And I do have the full outfit, I have the upper level unlocked. Oh, I haven't bought the bigger sack yet though, that's probably what I was saving up for. So for tonight, I'm just going to AFK Motherload Mine and stack up on the ores. Before you get access to the Giants Foundry minigame, there's a quest that you have to do, Sleeping Giants. And this also happens to be the very last quest that we have to complete on the group Iron Man. Let's do this! I'm so excited to get the quest cape. No way, did she really? She said she got... The wool for the quest, she got it for me? Oh, this is the best part about group Iron Man. You just, you, your teammates save you so much time. All right, let's start the Sleeping Giants quest. So exciting. Everything we've ever done has built up to this point. So true. I feel like there's this certain art direction that the team, the Jagex team has been like going with. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's like a certain art style. You see that thing next to us? The, the thing you're using right now. Yeah. I heard that only shooting stars can break that. Thank you. And there we go. The final quest is completed on the group Iron Man. Do you have your, uh, your quest cape? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> everything we have ever done from the very beginning of the of the accounts the goal that we set out from the very start is finally completed we have now oh wait here let's put it on at the same time we've now completed every quest on the group iron man great timing perfect we're such besties yeah yeah we're like twins but not that kind of twins because that'd be weird <laughs> yeah that was fun i'm gonna go put, uh, put the quest cave back into the bank until the next quest comes out okay have fun good morning gamers i am ready for a full action-packed day of training smithing and I was thinking about what a good goal could be. And for the Arty Elite Diary, you need 91 smithing to be able to make a rune crossbow from scratch. But with Giant's Foundry, there's a new item that boosts plus four. It's a guaranteed item, so you don't have to use the stew boost. So maybe I could go for 87. And then I'd be able to use that plus four boost for the diary task. First things first though, I'm going to want to make ores into bars. So we're going to be going to Blast Furnace. But what would help a lot with Blast Furnace would be the coal bag. So we have our golden nuggets here. We're going to trade Prospector Percy and buy the coal bag for 100 golden nuggets. And if you don't know what the coal bag does, it holds up to 27 coal, or 36 if you have the smithing cape. I know there's like always stuff I can free up for my bank, but I always just end up buying more bank space. And because I have a lot of money, uh, let's see how much it would cost to buy the next tier of uh, 40 slots. 5 mil. Uh, okay, let's just do it. 40 slots, spend, 5 mil, yes. And now I can put more items into the bank. 960 is the total. <laughs> okay, NC Hider is on. We're in resizable. I got my bank all set up so the four items are in the corner here. I got the bank filler so I don't deposit the stuff in my inventory. Goldsmith gauntlets, ice gloves. I've been doing a combination of uh, gold and mithril, and once I get in the rhythm and stuff, I'll just do a voiceover and explain what's going on. Oh my god, it has been a long time since I've played an account that had a coal bag. You can just fill the coal bag straight from the bank if you shift click. It takes it straight out of the bank, or if you empty it, it goes straight back into the bank, right from the coal bag. Oh, that, dude, that is so freaking cool. First smithing level of the grind, coming in with 76. With Blast Furnace, you only have to use half the coal as normal. So for Mithril, it's only two coal each instead of four, which means you could do a trip of double coal and then two trips of coal and myth 
to get two inventories of mithril bars. So why then am I adding gold into the mix when I could be perfectly fine just making my mithril bars? Well, if you think about the alternative as an Iron Man, you have all these gold ores that you're going to use eventually, and when you do decide to use them, you won't be able to use the coal bag then to help with anything since all you need for gold bars is just the gold ore. It takes barely any extra time to add an inventory of coal, so if you're solely making gold bars, at least as an Iron Man, you're missing out on a lot of potential per inventory. And the rotation for this method is coal and gold, coal and myth, coal and gold, coal and myth, and so on. It just goes back and forth alternating the myth and the gold. I've never actually done blast furnace this way before, so this was new to me, but it was super easy to pick up on, and once you focus on it for like 15 minutes, the muscle memory starts working and it gets super easy. And also wanted to mention something that threw me off at the start, which is that when you're doing this method, the coal bag ends up with one extra coal because of the goldsmith gauntlets. So when you try to fill the coal bag back up from the bank, you need to double click it from the bank interface because it empties it first and then it fills it up on the second click. I love learning different methods like this because I've spent the last couple years playing UIM, so a lot of this stuff is new to me because the last time I had a bank, I was a mega noob who didn't know this kind of stuff. But yeah, that's the gold slash myth blast furnace hybrid method, and I hope this helped at least someone out. Man tries an edible once and has to start calling everything hybrid. 77, 78, 79. It has now been about three hours of training smithing at the blast furnace. I've converted pretty much all the mithril ores into bars, as well as a bunch of gold too. Uh, and we have 6.8k mithril bars. And I managed to average about 180k smithing XP per hour, which definitely is not efficient, but if you're a normal, non-tick efficient player like me, you could probably expect about 180k. Now, if you're busy typing on Discord, switching between YouTube videos and whatnot, I think it's pretty average. Almost forgot to take the GP out. I spent about 220k to have the blast furnace run. The way Zion's Foundry works is very interesting because you could just use the bars. I think it's 14 and 14 of two different kinds of bars. So I would do like 14 Mithril and 14 Addy, for example. But in place of using bars, you can instead use items that you smith. Like for example, plate bodies, chain bodies, long swords. The only thing is though, is that when you use those weapons or armor, it gives you minus one of the amount of bars that you normally need to make it. So for a plate body, you use five bars to make it, but then it counts for four bars using it in Giant's Foundry, or like the plate legs use three bars to make, but it only counts as two bars for Foundry. So because of that, I think it would be most efficient to just use the pieces of armor instead of using the bars, because when I'm smithing those pieces of armor, I get more XP than if I were to just throw the bars right in there. And it seems like the most efficient thing to make would be plate bodies, since those are the only five bar item. If you get four bars back, that means you're saving 80% of the bars, versus if you were to make plate legs, for example, example, you'd get two back, which would be saving two thirds or 66% of the bars. So if the calculations are correct, I believe plate bodies would be the best thing to make. So I will be making most or all, or yeah, most of these mithril bars into plate bodies because I can't think of any other practical use for an Iron Man since mithril darts really are not that good. As for the Addy bars though, I have a different plan for those. I am not going to be making these into plate bodies. Also, you don't have to do 14 and 14 for Giant's Foundry with the two different kinds of bars. You could use all of the same type of bar and just use 28 of one. Um, I haven't done it myself, but from the videos I've been watching, it doesn't seem like it's worth it to just use all of one type of bar. Uh, you could mix and match the numbers too for the different kinds of bars. You could do like 10 and 18, for example, but it seems like the best use of them would probably be to do 14 and 14. There's a pretty recent update for crafting and smithing interfaces where now you can just press the space bar to make the last item that you made just like that. And it highlights the last item you made too, which is not a Runelite plugin in this case. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Before I continue making any more plate bodies, I was watching Zulu's video. He did an extremely in-depth video, which I think this was on day of release of Giant's Foundry. And I don't know if you could see that question right here. Is it better to make armor at an anvil and then use it at Giant's Foundry? The short answer is no. And I believe him because he's a lot smarter than I am. So uh, we're gonna skip this step of making the armor here and just move on <laughs> to the next thing. But I think it's essentially because each sword that you make at Giant's Foundry gives you so much XP compared to making plate bodies that even with the one bar loss, you still lose out on more XP than if you were to use that one extra bar to make more swords at the Foundry. 
hopefully that makes sense. As I said, I don't think mithril bars are that practical for an Iron Man, so I don't mind just using the actual bars of mithril for Foundry, but as for Addy, those are really nice to have for darts and bolts, so I don't want to throw my actual Addy bars in there. I'd rather just use Addy items, which I can just buy with GP, and as you know, I do have a lot of GP at this point, so I'm going to buy the plate bodies and plate legs, which kind of works out nicely because three plate bodies would get me to 12 bars, and then one plate legs would give me two bars. Uh, so it'd be three plate bodies and one legs per sword at Giant's Foundry. And just to clarify, it is really easy to get mithril ores on an Iron Man. You could just buy a bunch of them from Blast Furnace if you wanted to, but Addy, not so much. You can't just straight up buy Addy ores really easily. Um, you can buy them from the Czar Shop with Tackle, but each world only stocks two Addy ore, so you wouldn't really have a fun go doing that. Or there's Volcanic Mine too, but that also requires quite a bit of time investment. So because of that, that is why I value Addy bars more than I value GP on an iron. To save the most inventory space, I got the concave equipped to get back here and then the Draken's Medallion to bank. It looks like for each sword at Foundry I want to make, it's costing me about 57 to 58 k GP. Uh, just for the Addy bars. I just spent over 1.1 mil GP, so maybe we should actually like try out this method first and see how it is. And if I like doing it with uh, the stuff from here and that works out well, I could always buy more, but I don't want to continue to spend GP if it's not going to end up working out. So let's go ahead and minigames tell you on over there. So we commission a sword, we go over to the mold over here, and we find the ones in green that add up to the most. And it doesn't matter if like one of these is more than the other one, you just, as long as it adds up to the highest number possible. Well, that's what matters. We set the mold, come over here, we'll throw in the plate bodies and it's kind of slow, the plate legs, and these. And then we can pick up the incomplete sword and look like a super cool anime character with an oversized sword. There's three bars. The top bar is for the amount of mistakes you make that will go down, and it's a really bad thing if that goes down. The second bar is the current temperature of the sword, and the third bar is what stage of the sword that we're on. This first stage is red, which is the hammer, so we're gonna use the hammer, and you'll see the temperature is going down as this bar is progressing the sword very slowly. If the bar is not in the proper color and then you continue to work on it, you're going to lose the quality of the sword. So you don't want to do that. Instead, you want to go back to either the lava pool, which heats it up, or the waterfall, which cools it down, depending on which way, uh, which direction you need the temperature to go. It's very slow to do it this way, but you can right click or you can even like uh, switch the, the click option with rune light. Um, to make it go faster if you use the dunk in this case. And then we go back to finish off the stage and then you don't want to continue going because that's the wrong one. And then we'll go on to the next one, which we need to get to the yellow. So we're gonna go to the waterfall to cool it down. For the red and the green stages, those go to the left as you do them. But for the yellow one or the orange one, it moves to the right as you do that one. And it's kind of funny that like I'm explaining this when it's literally my first sword I'm making outside of the quest. But I feel like I've watched so many videos at this point that I just understand already how this whole thing works. Every once in a while there's gonna be a yellow box around here which means you can click and do a what's it called a perfect action or something uh, which just like boosts this progress bar ahead. And just like that the first sword is made zero mistakes let's hand it in and we get 13.8 K XP. Um, took me 10 minutes you can ignore the time I'll get a lot better as time goes on but uh uh, is the qual okay? So we got 137 quality. Is that equivalent to the amount of here? I'll take another commission. Is that equivalent to the amount of like points we get? Yeah, reputation, yes. Okay, that is the same thing. We can buy these molds that will make the swords better, and then you get more reputation for better swords. So that's the thing I'm going to prioritize is just buying the better molds, which. I guess at this rate, I'll be able to buy one every two to three swords I make. And you can see the GP I got in return was 27.7k. Oh my god, I've discovered this Runelite plugin from the plugin hub. It's just called uh, Easy Giants Foundry. And it highlights, like it's green, which means you're supposed to use that. It's going to turn, oh, blue, I get it. Okay, there, there's a lot going on as you can see. It would turn orange though to like signify that you're going to need to move very soon after maybe one more action or something. And it just, it, it's so cool to get the plugin if you're doing this, it's so good. I just want to show that it doesn't matter what you wear here because whenever you trade in a sword, you'll see the run gets healed to full. Um, also looks like we have enough points now to buy the first of these uh, molds, which it might be efficient to buy a specific one first, but I don't really know, I'm just gonna buy whatever. <laughs> I think that's really all I need to show for now. I'm not gonna show myself buying every single mold, but maybe when I like buy the last mold or something. Cool. 
Let's get to Smithin. Oh, dude, the Runelay plugin like highlights, it, it like shows the name in green, which one you should use as well, dude. <laughs> This minigames has been out for like two weeks or something and RuneLight's already solved it for you. Yeah, so with RuneLight, if you shift click with menu entry swap run, I'm gonna swap the dunk and I made the, the quench be the first ones because those are the ones that like make the bar go faster and those are the ones I'm gonna use most of the time. Another sword to turn in and that is going to put us at <laughs> level 80 smithing. I can now make the god sword blade. Oh, I didn't realize, I guess some of these molds have a smithing requirement. Makes me kind of angry. You know what mold, you better be careful or else I might turn into a shooting star. Am I allowed to reuse the same joke in the same? No, I don't even know why I'm asking that. Obviously I do that all the time. 81 smithing. Well, it's about dinner time. So I'm gonna go AFK at Motherboard Mine. But uh, this is my first two hours of doing Giant's Foundry. I averaged about 160K XP per hour which should go up a bit more as I unlock more of the molds. According to the collection log, I made 23 swords. I am almost out of the Addy stuff though, so um, before I come back here after I'm done AFK tonight, I'm gonna go buy a bunch more of these because these are working out pretty well. Oh, and the total GP that I earned from these two hours was 672K. Oh wow, I just got a new Corrupt Gauntlet PB. I came here tonight because my buddy Puff got an Enhanced Seed on his main account, of course. Um, so I thought maybe uh, Gauntlet's giving out enhanced seeds tonight, perhaps? Well, that was, uh, I think 13 Gauntlets that I did tonight, so here's the last one. And then I'm going to bed, and then tomorrow we will continue with the smithin. I just had this sudden realization that one of all this time that I'm spending hopping worlds to buy these Addy items, one of that just negates the opportunity cost of just using mithril and steel, which I have essentially unlimited of. I, I just spent 1.5 mil more GP to buy a bunch of Addy stuff, but once I run out, I'm gonna try myth and steel and see how that goes. And there's 82 smithing, which I just found out is a requirement to make the bofa, so now I don't have to boost smithing for that. <laughs> when I get the enhanced, of course. After 38 swords, I will now be able to buy the final mold from the shop, and yeah, so if you're doing this with Mithril and Addy, 38 is probably about the magic number. And the next things I'll be saving up for is buying pieces of the outfit. Oh man, look at that total XP. Once we turn the sword in, we are going to be at 200 mil. 83 smithin. I am now out of the Addy plate bodies and it looks like I was averaging about 190k smithin XP per hour, but I'm gonna try it with mithril and steel now. Still have a decent amount of myth plates, got a bunch of myth bars, a bunch of steel bars, so I'm gonna reset the XP per hour and we'll see what the rate's like with myth and steel. I can now buy the first piece of the outfit and every piece has the exact same effect, so you may as well just buy the cheapest things first. So we'll buy the gloves and that is a new collection log slot. Oh wait, oh we need the ice gloves, don't we? Wait, no, you can combine them, uh, right? Yes. Oh nice, okay, that's really cool. It's really nice for UIM too because I believe you can store these in the POH, so now ice gloves are storable for UIM. But what this outfit does is each piece gives you a 20% chance of smithing one tick faster when you're just like smithing anywhere in the game on an anvil. Um, so it would be 80% for the whole outfit, but there's a little extra boost for the whole outfit. So you get a 100% chance guaranteed to smith one tick faster when you get the full set. And it helps with foundry too. For each piece, there's a 20% chance that you make the preform slightly faster or 100% chance with the whole outfit. Hey, we just got 84. I can now buy another piece of the outfit. So let's go ahead and get the boots. Oh, this one is 85 smithing, uh, which means we can now use rune bars for uh, Giant's Foundry here and a few other things too. I could do the rune and Addy bar combo, or in this case, I have a bunch of rune items from, uh, well, it was mainly from Slayer. I think like all the stuff I got from Gauntlet, I just outed it as I got it because Giant's Foundry didn't exist. And they might have even mentioned that you could use armor pieces before it came out, but I just never thought about it. So I unfortunately did elk all those items as I got them. So while I do have all these rune items, this is also a lot of theoretical GP if I were to elk all of it. And you know what you can buy with GP is more bank space. I'll keep these till later on because maybe I'll come back here when I'm going for 99. But for now, I'm just chilling with the myth and the steel and the levels seem to be going by pretty fast. And when we get to that point, I might have a lot more supplies from doing Slayer and raids and other places. So we'll, we'll just see where we're at. I'm not going to use any rune items for now. Last sword for today. Turn that in. And here's the total smithing XP I gained from today. 
a little bit over 1.2 mil XP. And this is the XP per hour I was getting with the Myth and Steel combo, which was 150K versus when I was doing Myth and Addy, it was probably about 190K per hour. Hopefully that helps someone, but good night. Good morning, 86 smithing, and we now have enough uh, reputation to buy the next piece of the outfit. Let's get the trousers. One more piece to go. Back up to 4,000 reputation again, so we can now buy the last piece of the outfit. Let's get the smith's tunic, and now we have the full set done, all four pieces. And that is 87 smithing, so I can now do the plus four boost uh, to get all the diaries done in terms of smithing requirement, but I kind of want to stay here a bit longer because I'm just in the rhythm of doing it still. And uh, there's still more stuff to unlock for the collection log from the shop here. My go-to AFK thing for the last few days has just been mining at Motherload, and here we have level 84. Okay, last sword we're gonna do because this will get us one more level 88, and now let's go do some diary tasks. Oh, before we leave here, um, here's the amount of points I have. I think I'm just gonna save the points until we come back in the future and go for 99 or whatever. But for now, I've bought the Kovacs Grog for the plus four smithing boost, and it's also a collection log slot. Before I leave here, I just want to show you the collection log, and then also, as I was getting the GP from Giant's Foundry, I was converting all of it to platinum tokens. So here's the total GP I made. I mean, I did spend a bunch of GP to buy those Addy items, but this is just all the GP I got as a reward. I got my blacksmith's helm on so I don't hurt my eye. Uh, we're gonna drink up the Kovex Grog and quickly make the Runite Limbs. Nice. We'll add the crossbow string and that is the RD Elite task done. And there's one more task I want to do. And now we have finally achieved the rune crossbow on the ultimate tile man Yanel locked. There's this Lumbi elite task to smith an Addy plate body, which I don't even have to boost for. And in fact, I was looking at all the Lumbi tasks for the elite diary and I could just go do all of them. I have all the stat requirements. There's nothing standing in my way. So let's do the Lumbi elite diary and then we can get rid of the Draymond staff. And this is the last task for the Lumbridge elite diary. So now we can go get the reward. Let's talk to Hades because they anus and get the last reward and I'll put all the rewards up on screen. Uh, the most notable thing is being able to use the fairy rings without needing the Draymond staff and then I guess the sixth block slot is pretty nice too. And of course we get the 50k XP lamp which is going into Herblore. A couple things I wanted to talk about slash show here. So the first thing is the XP gain throughout this video. Uh, for the mining XP that I did in my downtime, it was over 300k mining XP. And then for the smithing XP, it was over 3 million smithing XP. We started this video at level 75 and we ended with level 88. Which for me, that's the equivalent of like 20, yeah, probably about 20 hours of smithing in this video. I realized I neglected to mention how I got all that coal to make all those bars. Uh, so I just want to show you in the loot vlogger plugin here from Zora, I got over 13k coal. From Cerberus, I got over 5k coal. Got a little bit from Chambers of Xeric too, and I probably got more from like Brimstone Keys, Crystal Keys, Thermi, uh, Bandos, of course mining it too. And at the start of this video, I think I had like 50k coal. So I just want to mention that for any of you that may have been curious. If you remember uh, for a few videos, we were working towards that group boss bash raffle thing and the winners were finally announced. And as you can see on screen, we did not win, but congratulations to the winners. Um, I kind of like just gave up because I got really addicted to doing Gauntlet and I really wanted Bofa and Gauntlet was unfortunately not part of the group boss bash raffle. Mod Lottie also posted this really cool graphic on Twitter of the top five sources for tickets gained during the group boss bash raffle from all the group Iron Man teams. And it looks like Bandos was by far the place where people got the most tickets from. Um, I guess we were part of that statistic too because we did do mostly Bandos. Uh, I did a little bit of raids, a little bit of Zami. But yeah, it makes sense as pretty much what I was expecting. Even like as a solo player with a Bofa, you could still get a bunch of Bandos KC per hour. With that though, we are gonna call it a video here. We got the full uh, Smith's outfit. We got the Lumbi Elite Diary done and I might start off the next video by doing Gauntlet because I really, really want to get Bofa. But with that said, make sure to check out my duo teammate Spook Dogs channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again next time. I just want to show you this because it was so cool. If you haven't noticed already, me and Spook each have new banners on our channels and uh, she, she drew these herself and I just really wanted to show them off, show you like the full picture of them because they don't exactly show up too well on PC slash mobile. So yeah, it's so good, dude. She's so talented.